All right, hey guys, welcome to another episode of Kicking It With Quran. Today we have a special guest, Mahesh, with us. Uh, we're going to be talking all things big data. Uh, so, Mahesh, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Mahesh Tyagarajan, uh, Director of Product Management here. I'm very excited to talk to you, Quran. It's been a, it's been a while. I don't know who you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your history. Why don't you do that? Um, I think, you know, for folks, uh, you know, some folks inside Oracle and Microsoft know me. So I come from Microsoft, worked on their Azure Infrastructure Services platform before I came here, uh, did the database services, you know, Exadata Cloud Service, uh, you know, all of that stuff. And uh, in the last six to nine months, I've been focusing on big data. Right? Big data, cool. So let's talk about big data, right? Like when people talk about big data, there are so many things, right? There's like Hadoop, MapReduce, Everybody has a big data service. Somebody has a big data appliance. Like, why don't you demystify like big data for 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 you know folks, right? I mean, I think you know uh, when I think about big data, essentially, um, more than any single provider, right? Be it be it you know any one of the top providers, um, the community has actually innovated a lot, right? Uh, and and the community continues to innovate, and it's one of the fastest growing markets. So for us. Um, you know, when I think about it from a cloud infrastructure provider perspective, our goal uh, is number one to actually have a platform that embraces the independent software vendors because right. they are the leaders in the market today. And uh, you know, we announced partnerships with Cloudera. Right. Uh, we have uh, partnerships with MapR and Hardenworks coming out. So I think you know, our goal is to uh, be a very open partner, a very open cloud platform that allows. ISV software to run amazingly well. Right, right, because like you look at some of the other cloud providers, right? They want you to integrate into the into an API, right? So right. you got to rip apart your application, you got to re retool it together to an API, and that's not the tack we're taking, right? No. We're saying, hey, ISV, you know, hey, customer, if you have an ISV, it just runs seamlessly on us. Exactly, and it also sort of, you know, there are two additional value props, right? Because you know, you could go run the software on any cloud provider, for example. But I think the difference for us really comes from the infrastructure that we've built out, right? Um, when I say the infrastructure that we've built out, when you really think about big data, it's all about performance, right? Performance and scale. Um, and we're the only cloud provider that offers performance SLAs for you know, 60 IOPS per GB on block and network performance SLA for your bare metal servers. And so what all of that translates to is, well, those software will, will actually run on any cloud provider, but it'll run amazingly well on all so the cloud So what kind of a, like, you know, just hypothetically, right? Like, let's say you're running a Hadoop cluster or maybe a Cloud Era cluster, right? What kind of a performance gain, you know, versus cost? Like, is there a major difference between us and like other cloud providers in that sense that if you're running a stack on us, it's going to be better and it's going to be cheaper? Uh, absolutely, right. And I think the first, I'll hit the cost aspect of it, right? Um, by default, um, our compute costs on, on pay as you go pricing is right. about 30% cheaper, um, right? And block is about 50% cheaper, and you have network that's 86% cheaper, zero costs if you're setting up a hybrid environment. So when you put that together and actually say, hey, if I'm really setting up a big data environment, and especially hybrid environment, you're now talking about um, you know, 60 to 70% of your cost, which is dominated by compute, right. at 30% cheaper cost, right. right? Remaining is dominated by storage, and that's at 50%. Is so there any licensing cost on top of that? As so well? the licensing cost remains constant, right. right? Because, you know, what you pay to Cloudera on the licensing cost, or what you pay to MapR or Hardenworks remains consistent. So right. that is that, change. how much is that percentage versus like compute, for example? So typically what we've seen is that um, the, licensing cost that you would pay to any you know big data software vendor is probably you know in terms of the entire ecosystem uh, you're probably looking at about 20% of your wow. total big data environment right. so if you really look at hey you know uh, i'm going to spend $100 on setting this environment up you know you probably only pay about $20 to that you pay $80 to the you know the wow. cloud provider and what we're saying is you get extreme you know, value prop at no compromise on performance, you're going to get cheaper, you know, cost for running that infrastructure. And it, you know, it goes in with the no vendor lock-in message. If you're a large enterprise, you want to, you know, keep running that, um, you, you know, use at like the Terraform lowest cost. Or like whatever. you're using Terraform, you don't want to change your technology. You run a 2000 node uh, cloud or a cluster on premises and. It's very easy for you to move into the cloud. Right, so if you're running another cloud provider, you can just bring your Terraform scripts, change the provider, and it just runs. Follow all your best practices that you used to, do it on the cloud, right? Cool. At no cost, no compromise on performance. So, so we have a really good partnership with Cloud Air, right? What are some of the other integrations that are coming or you know, already you know, OCS supports? So from purely from an integration perspective, um, right, we've built out uh, Terraform templates that allows people to you know, set up 
you know, dev, te dev test clusters, uh, spin up hundred, you know, thousand node clusters very easily, right? So we've got all of that automation ready to go. Um, we've also tuned um, the profiles for right. different shapes that our platform offers, so it actually makes it even more simpler to manage. Um, we're also working with Cloud around deeper integrations, especially around the Director plugin right. and, and their long-term visions around Altus. And so there's there's a lot of stuff coming in the future. Um, but you know, Cloud is one of our key partners, but we have many other partners as well, right? So right. we have you know MapR and Hardenworks were you know interesting uh, providers, and we are partnering with them heavily, and their their solutions are almost out as well. Right, so like looking into the future, right, um, you know, still a lot of people run, you know, big data clusters on-prem, right? Yeah. Nothing's really moved completely to the cloud. Right. Like, where, where do you see the future going, right? Like, where do you see the future of big data going? Where do you see, like, you know, the big, big innovation things happening from a cloud standpoint? Like, what's the big trend on the big data side, right, in the next, like, one to five years, right? So, you know, when you re when people talk about big data, right, and it, it moved away from a lot of the, the Hadoop um, ecosystem, if you, essentially, down to more of a Spark-based, um, you know, uh, analytics jobs, and, and it's trending towards the advanced analytics, AI, and ML space, right? right. Once again, here, um, you know, the, the goal for us is really to say that, you know, you got a bottomless data lake, right, that you can actually stream any type of data, do any type of transformation, use any type of software. And if right. you want to use Oracle software, we have, we have services for that as well. Right. More than happy to use it, but we want to embrace what customers want. So, so while, while the processing is just one aspect of it, what you've got is you've, you have the ability where customers can stream the data in real time into the platform. So we've got some innovation going there. Um, then once the data processing at a higher level is done, you also want to start looking at some of our GPU offerings and right. actually say that, hey, you know, I want to be able to use the same data set that I just have here, train some models, right? right? Once I've and trained then some, back in, and right. then I want to feed that back in, I want to be able to easily build out, um, have my data scientists come and jump onto the, the right. environment and actually be easily able to- Do you to see customers it. actually moving some data, let's say like, you know, we have a lot of customers. Every enterprise customer has an Oracle database deployment today, right? Right. They've got a crap ton of database data in there right. that they want to be able to leverage for like additional value, right? Right. Do you right. see that happening with the with the pipeline as well? Honestly, that's one of our significant advantages, if you right. will. Right. If you really look at the last twenty years of um, you know <laughs> what has happened in the enterprise market, right? Um, majority of the applications were developed or SQL. And you know, 50 to 60 percent of those applications were built on top of Oracle database. And so, what Oracle Cloud Infrastructure really does is that ability where you could run an Exadata rack, or right. we could run any of those different Oracle databases in the various offerings using a rack database. All of that in the same network that you're going to run your big data cluster on. Right. So it's that's a right huge advantage. That's a huge advantage. It's just sitting right next to each other. The data is moving from these databases securely onto this over a private network. Like what? What else can you ask for? Right. So there's no additional cost in moving the data. Right. Your entire platform is essentially in a in, in, in the cloud, and, right? and your entire pipeline more so actually is seamlessly set up. Where you're not worried about security, where you're not worried about latency, where you're not worried about performance, and all of this comes at one of the cheapest costs that you could ever do on the cloud. So it's um, you know the, the platform is built for big data, right? It's it's a high performance environment shines through. Um, and we recently made a you know a couple of acquisitions around datascience.com. Right. So that's integrating deeply into the platform. So you know starting from the workloads that are traditional in the big data space, be it Hadoop and MapReduce, down all the way to the next generation of right. innovation that you want to do with your ML yeah. or even some of the the new innovation on, on neural networks. All of that should be easy. Like possible we say, this. bring your past, build your future. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Mahesh, for joining us today. I think Absolutely. that was uh, you know enlightening. Yep. Uh, we could talk about this all day, right? Yes. So uh, thank you again for joining for another episode. We'll see you next time.